Open date this week for the Liberty Flames football team, but the coaching staff still hard at work as we visit now with the head coach of the Liberty Flames, Turner Gill. And uh, Coach, I know it's still a busy week for you. A lot of things going on, recruiting, self-scouting. Uh, give us an idea of what your plans are here this week. Well, uh, uh, like you mentioned about recruiting, uh, we got our coaches all over the place and trying to uh, get ahead as far as in the 2017 class. Uh, we're looking at just about every position, uh, athletes that can uh, do the things academically, can, can obviously uh, get in, uh, engaged with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at our university, training champions for Christ, and, and then uh, being some good football players and help our community. So uh, a lot of business going on and then looking at some football, uh, evaluating our own things that we've done here in our first five ball games and the things we've done well. I just don't look at just the negatives. Uh, I do look at the positive things that we've uh, improved on from uh, the first ball game to the fifth game. And then the areas that we need to drastically uh, improve in a, in, a, in a great manner. Yeah, there really are a lot of uh, good things to talk about through the first five games. Certainly the record's not where you wanted it, two and three. But uh, start on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, eight interceptions in five games this year. This team's really taken the football away. That's tied for the fourth most in the country right now as far as FCS teams. Uh, what's this defense really done to, to force that many turnovers? Well, I think I'm going to start first a little bit with our coaching staff. They've done a great job of teaching the techniques and fundamentals about things of that nature. I think the other part of it is recruiting within also our, uh, our football staff. We talked about getting guys who can catch the football a little bit more than we have in the past. Uh, so I think that has taken into context of saying how many interceptions has this guy had when we're recruiting a high school player? And sometimes in the past, you really didn't, you know, didn't really look at that. You say, well, you know, it's okay to be a, a guy that can defend and, and bat the ball down or whatever. But, yes, you got to do that. Uh, but if a guy has some hands. And so we worked on that. And so every now and then I go over there and throw some balls to him and pass to him. And that nature's for our DBs uh, to make sure we can catch the ball, have INTs, interceptions. So I think those are one or two areas where we have definitely improved on in the recruiting process and the technique and the training. Uh, of the fundamentals that our coaching staff has done. Off topic here, but uh, you mentioned you're throwing to them. How far can you still get it down the field? <laughs> well, I haven't <laughs> tried to max out here anymore because I, I keep a limit trying to be smart here. Over 50 years old, you, you listen to your body a little bit there. But, uh, you know, I can still throw it around a little bit there occasionally. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I'm sure the defensive guys like that challenge. Uh, you look at the off-season preparation as well, and that's something I talked with Robert Wimberly about the other day, is that he and Marshall Roberts really took it on themselves to prepare these guys more in the off-season for what they were going to see on game day. Is that really paying off here? Well, I think it's paying off. We uh, made a change during the summer. We uh, had a mandatory as far as NCAA allowed us to have those two hours a week if we wanted to use them in the summer. And so we did that. And so we used eight opportunities in the summer where we had not ever done that before. So we had an opportunity to, to talk more football, to teach more football, and really get a lot of just basics. So, again, that was eight more times where we had opportunities to teach and prepare them on how to go about doing their work, their fundamentals, and all that. So we, instead of us waiting all the way to August, uh, we got a little bit early start on it, and I think that's played uh, very good dividends for us. Defensive line continues to play extremely well. Also, certainly spotlighted by Jawan Wells, 9.6 tackles per game. That's the most <coughs> of any defensive lineman in FCS football. Uh, but there's a lot of guys up there that are making it happen. Advanced Singletary is really uh, – really just rolled over and reloaded again on that defensive line. Well, again, Coach Wembley and Coach Singletary, they all done a great job there in recruiting, uh, getting some talented young men, and then you got to teach them how to do things in that way. And I think they've done a tremendous job of no matter who's in there, whether they've been young or a little bit older experience-wise, they've still been able to be very productive. Uh, and it's been tremendously, as far as Jawan Wells, is a guy that's very, very talented, God-given talent that he has, and speed, quickness, strength. But more important, the preparation, how to understand, how to play the game, how to read certain things that you need to read, and so you can make plays. And so he is definitely making a lot of plays. And really, the whole D line, Jerron Green's having a fantastic year, too. A nose guard, you really don't get a whole lot of big stats, and that's part of it. But he's actually <laughs> been able to put up some stats here as far as a nose guard. And uh, he's done a tremendous job getting off blocks and exploding, making plays. Is this defense the way it is now, kind of what you envisioned it being one day when you, when you took over here, more? quick, more athletic, more that that four two five look. Well yeah, this is this is kind of where we're at here now in the fifth season I've been here is really getting more speed. I probably the last part of it has been the linebacker position is really saying get more speed at that position. I think we're just about there. Uh, I feel pretty good about everybody that's there at that point in time and, and then all the other positions as far as the D lineman and our, our secondary we have quality guys there now just a matter 
do they actually play the technique that needs to play on every single play? And that's the challenge at every every school, every team, every deal, whether you're offense or defense, our guys are really understanding how to play the game of football and why the offense is doing what they're doing and being able to see it and then react versus see it, think, and then react, and sometimes that's too late. When you look at the offensive side of the ball, there's certainly been a lot of question marks over there this year, quarterback, offensive line. Uh, it seems like the quarterback question has been answered now with Buckshot Calvert and the af- effort that he had against uh, Robert Morris throwing for 340 yards. But uh, that, that's just one piece. Uh, as you look at the offense here in the bye week and you assess where everything is, what have you found so far? What, what's the identity of this offense? What do you want it to be going forward? Well, I think the identity as far as going forward is just continue to be a physical and then being able to execute and do the fundamentally things right. And always is taking care of the football. That's probably the, really the number one part is taking care of the football. Our identity is just to uh, play each play as hard as you can, be more physical than the other opponent, execute your technique. And so I think the guys are we're, we're, we're getting there. We're obviously not totally there yet. Uh, we kind of done things in spurts. Uh, I think the offensive line there, unfortunately, here in the first five ball games, we've kind of uh, haven't had those five group of guys be there the whole time. And so we hopefully now with this bye week uh, that we go into this stretch here where we will have everybody healthy and ready to go in those first five ball games. But the plus side of it is we got a lot of guys with a lot of experience, uh, at least have played one or two games or whatever. And so therefore, if they have to get called upon, uh, they've already been playing a lot of football. So there is some good have been out of that as far as the offensive line. But I think overall, we see guys improving. Antonio Gandy Golden has done a great job as far as that goes. And so our receivers are doing some things that are in a good way. Backs are running hard. Uh, tight ends are doing all they're doing. We just got to keep meshing together. And I think we're, we're right, right on time here uh, uh, to get this all going offensively. Yeah, is is there an ideal front five that that you've that you've had this year on the offensive line that, that you would say if I if I could line them up the way that I want them, you know, with injuries aside and all that, is, is there an ideal group that you'd have up there? Uh, I think the, we're we're not quite so. I think we got six people, and uh, I think outside of that six, we, we can play any of these six or five guys that we have to play out of the six. It's just a matter of getting those guys there, the chemistry, the same way. So it really doesn't matter as far as that goes. But we just want to get those five or six guys and where they able to play and and stay healthy and get after it. We talked about Calvert uh, at quarterback so much and and what he's done as far as making the progressions and making the right decisions out there. Joe Daly's really praised his ability to do that. Was there a hesitation at the at the start of the season to start him just with him being a true freshman? It seems like that's that's kind of a, a common theme across college football. It's it's really a lot to ask of a young man. Well, at the beginning of the season, he had not earned to be the starting quarterback. I mean, it wasn't even a question as far as uh, whether he's going to be the starter in the first game or not be the starter in the first game. Stefan had done the things that he needed to do offseason, preseason, as far as our camp and all those type of things that he had earned to be the starting quarterback. Uh, it's probably really the other way is we just didn't anticipate him uh, to start out as well uh, or not as good as he should have as far as taking care of the football. That, that's probably the number one thing is taking care of the football. And then some reads were the most common things. So it really – kind of came a little bit of a surprise that then had to think about that that maybe he's not the guy, you know, after two ball games or so or three ball games to say that uh, we may have to consider that. And so that was really probably right after the third ball game time. The SMU was really the time where it kind of came across my mind. We need to consider Steve Calver. But up until then, uh, you know, Steve Calver had not earned to be the starting quarterback. Last couple of things here with the offense, uh, the run game, you know, uh, still trying to get that going a little bit. There's a lot of pieces that go into that. And I was talking with Joe Daly about it the other day, and it, it, it can come down to sometimes the quarterback just not making the right read if there's a, a run pass option. Uh, those are little things that maybe the, the fans don't see. Uh, what, what's been the, the biggest thing holding back the run game that you've seen, though? Well, I'll still go back to the first statement that I made earlier about being more physical. Offensive line got to be more physical at the line of scrimmage. In some cases, our, the D line has been more physical than us. Uh, there has been some truth as far as our quarterbacks, as far as the reads that they need to do, as far as there are certain people in the box and they need to throw the football. We've been a little bit inconsistent in that, and so you really have probably no chance of being successful as far as running the football when they have more people in the box that you can block. Yeah, run back every now and then can make somebody miss, but it's not going to happen on a consistent basis. So I think those are two or three things that we need to clean up here and then this uh, bye week and then if we get for, uh, moving forward here in the, in the weeks to come. Last thing. Thoughts on special teams here through the first five games and with Scott Downing in his first season overseeing that unit? 
Well, I love what he's doing. Uh, I love the way he's teaching a lot of more technique and fundamentals on things. And so, therefore, we've been using a lot of different guys and rotating them around. And when they've been called upon, they've been able to make some plays. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there we did have a you know, block field goal as far as that goes and some things of that nature. But I think overall, most of the teams, I think we have been uh, very, very successful. I think it's really only one game. And we kind of count hitting yardage as far as what we gain as far as field position wise there. And so really only one game and that would have been really the um, I think it's Jacksonville State where we didn't win that battle. And I think Virginia Tech and, and uh, Jacksonville State, we didn't win it. Otherwise, we've been uh, 40 to 30 or so yards. So we had hitting yardage where it's been advantageous field position wise. So I like where we're at and I like where we're going. I like the way he teaches the game. He does a fantastic job of being able to do that. And so I'm glad he's on our side. And I think that we will continue to get better. Coach, appreciate the time. Wish you safe travels coming up here in the next week. All right, thank you, and to God be the glory. That's the head coach of the Liberty Flames, Turner Gill. My name is Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.